Well, hello everyone. This is you, Sai. Welcome to Let's Talk, and thank you for being here. It's such an exciting next seven days for me because I am going to be with the Sports Illustrated Sun Tzu family. And starting out this special series, I have none other than the editor in chief of Sports Illustrated Sun Tzu with me, and that's MJ Day. And she's no stranger to all you guys. So say hi. Hi guys. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> yes. Well, MJ, thank you for being with me. Uh, thank you for being here with me today. I know that you're a mom right now. You're homeschooling. You have kids at home. And you must be more busier than ever. Yeah, it's the quarantine life, you know, but we're all <laughs> healthy. So I'm grateful. I will take all of the accompanying for um, accompanying challenges that, that we're facing because we're all, everyone's good. Sound is a pound over here. Amazing. And for, before we dive into it, SI Talk, I need to give you such a gratitude and thank you for helping me with the initiative But Let's Talk that every guest that comes on the show, we're donating 500 masks to first responder. And every guest have come on so far have also matched our donation. So just being here today, we are donating a thousand masks just because you're here today. So thank you so much for matching our donation and being so supportive in this process. Well, I get it. I mean, my husband's a physician and we are located in the epicenter of the COVID crisis in New Jersey. And so I, I know the struggle firsthand, and I know that all of these incredible donations that you and your guests are making are, are going to be very, very well received by the different institutions that they're going to. So thank you, and thank no, all well, of your guests. So everyone, we could not do this without MJ Day's help because that because your husband is a physician and we're able to get these masks directly to first responder without any red tape. So if you guys want to learn more about this, you're welcome to go to the website. If you wish to donate, we'll be glad to take your help, but please go read about it and see the initiative and we'd love for you to join and help out the cause. So with that said, let's talk about SI Swimsuit. Let's talk. <laughs> well, MJ, you are the editor-in-chief of the magazine, and the magazine has a journey of 54 years so far. I would love for us to dive right in into the history of the magazine and how has it evolved over time. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Um, swims, the swimsuit issue at Sports Illustrated was really came about because there was a lull in a calendar, right? Like long, long, long time ago, kind of how it is right now. There were no sports going on. And so <laughs> um, the the editors, at, you know, in charge at SI thought, well, we need to kind of fill this gap where there's, you know, no football and there's no baseball and NHL the hockey, you know, season really wasn't what it's become. And um, so they did a, a, a skin diving article um, and, a model was in a wetsuit, I think, coming out of the water. And um, people really got excited about that. And it was a little bit of a departure from what they normally, you know, featured in the magazine. And so over the years during that, that lull, you would see Westminster dog show, you know, <laughs> <laughs> stories and fishing stories. And so, you know, it, it, it sort of, plug this little hole of escapism during the cold dreary mm. months and um you know that's where it was sort of born because people responded to it really favorably and enthusiastically so it became a tradition and here we are 2020 and we're still doing it so um it was really it, it was it was born of of that to sort of you know create content and um you know here we are decades later and we're still creating content, but it's not to fill a hole anymore. It's to, you know, champion a message. It's to celebrate women. It's to celebrate successes. It's to celebrate, you know, so many different things. And it's it's really evolved into a special brand with special well, people attached to it. For those of those of you who have never seen the very first cover, I love for you guys to see that this was the very first cover for Special Space Swimsuit. Uh, yeah, and it has evolved. Babette, Babette Mark. Babette. <laughs> And I actually got to meet her. She was at the, the anniversary um, event. She was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, we to get shot all... her for the 50th. Yeah. 
That was such a special event. That was amazing. And Were over you the years- Were excited to meet her, Yutsai? I mean, gosh, oh, you've shot God. enough of these. Was it a moment for you? <laughs> it was because, you know, obviously I wasn't alive yet in 1964. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. But, but yes, because she, you know, as a photographer, I have always looked towards Sports Illustrated as a, as a, a bucket list and a, light, a goal as a photographer. I wanted to to shoot covers for this magazine. That was my aesthetic, my love to shoot beautiful women. And and for me to have been ten last 10 years, we have 10 years of relationship. People, I don't know how many people know that, but we've been working together for 10 years. And that 10 years, each time I still get so excited every year that as if it's my very first year. So to meet the very first model who ever graced the cover was super, super special for me. It was awesome. So thank you. You, do. For that. you get so excited. I love how excited you get because you would think that you'd be a little bit jaded after all this time, but that's the creative yeah. artist in you because every shoot I feel like is a new opportunity for you to make some magic and challenge yourself, you know? And and our first shoot together was in Turkey, Cappadocia. I mean, I it was so epic and beautiful. There's a gorgeous envy here. And I how can these trips, how can anybody get jaded on these trips? Come on, it was incredible. So, uh, so from the magazine where it was to fill the gap of the, the, the downtime for sports, it has, the brand itself has become a stable. It's not just a one issue a year magazine any longer. It's all year round, this content being delivered. And how have you seen this evolve the last few years? Well, I think the brand itself has gone from just being known as a print publication where you feature beautiful women in beautiful places in beautiful swimsuits to the personalities that drive the machine, you know? So every single person involved in this in Sports Illustrated swimsuit brings something very unique to the table. They do way more than just take a gorgeous photograph, you know, from our photographers to our models to our hair and makeup artists to our editorial staff you know everyone's contributing on on such a larger scale than a, a, a typical publication you know it's like I look at everybody who's involved in this brand as a collaborator and as a colleague not as one of my models or one of my photographers mm -hmm. or one of my editors and so for me you know when we when we go forward every single day I think like like, here we are, Yutsai, you're hosting, you know, uh, live a Let's Talk on our Sports Illustrated Swimsuit channel and on your channel. And it, y y you're capable of so much more than just taking photographs, which you do exceptionally well, but your personality unto itself. And so is every single person associated with that brand. So, mm -hmm. you know, where I think, de you know, several decades ago, you just wanted someone who could really be a great model and take a beautiful mm. photo to now you want, you know, a, a very, very robust three dimensional person that can exist and represent themselves and your brand throughout the year on many, many different platforms. Well, it's, I, I love the 360. I like the way you describe it as the 360 because it, that means it's tangible. That's it's no longer are they just plastic models in swimwear. They they are on the beach somewhere that you photograph and you walk away. The responsibility of the models, the responsibility of the team, as you uh, the collective team, carries on be, way after the photo shoot. And that that is that I can attest to that because you know I now I get to meet the models from. The, the the model events when they launch and you get to really learn about them and through that you begin to learn how to shoot them differently and you develop a relationship and it's so it's unlike any other job that I get as an editorial photographer or a cover photographer you you truly have to invest so when you say that I still get excited to show up well much of that excitement still nerves because the responsibility is still there. Yes, we get to go to places like Switzerland and we're on the top of the mountain looking at Matterhorn. And yes, we get excited on the inside that we're there, but the pressure, how much pressure that, that I carry to make sure that this model have traveled this far to here with the entire crew have worked so hard to make this happen. And you're watching every frame that comes in. And I have to look over and say, is she nodding her head or she's shaking her head? Because <laughs> that is still the, and, and, I, and I hope I always have that nerve every time I show up and work with you because I would never want to take it for granted. And, and, and the girls, the responsibility for me 
to deliver a good picture for these girls are, are are tremendous. And I don't know, you know this or not. Every time I launch, I get the I get the models come up and say, "Oh my gosh, I wish next trip I can be with you," or "I wish we could have done this differently." It's really an ever evolving experience. And and every year when I get invited to the launch, I get more excited about what's going to happen next year because I see how excited they are. I see how excited that they what they can bring and the messaging what they can bring and that's what seems so different for me now for for the for the brand and and look at Camille um the cover model Camille and I want to give her a shout out and thank her that she has inspired me so much to take let's talk into a platform that can help raise money to donate masks because she has done tremendous work with you on bringing masks to first responders as well so it's people like her and 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 all the other girls who are doing so much in the community that makes this brand so powerful for me and for me to always want to come back. And always, I, I, listen, you know me, I will email you and say, am I coming back? I never know am I coming back or not. Please. <laughs> You're well, like my sister from another mister, come on. <laughs> I, no, I, I truly like that. I mean, it's an evolution for everybody, right? Like we, mm. I think the beauty of like this brand and what we all, how we all work together is that we're constantly evolving, right? Like I never want to be in a position you know, as the editor of this franchise or, you know, as the, the shepherd of the brand to say, this is the only way we're going to do it and it's never going to mm -hmm. change. And, you know, I, I'm not that person and I don't think the brand is that brand. I think the resilience that this issue ha has is because of the people that have led it, of the, of the people that have, have been a part of it, because it's a, it's a very nimble brand. It's a very, it, the, the the talent that we work with are also very nimble there it's it's not a no you know nothing's ever a no it's a it's a yeah let's let's see how we can explore this you know let's how can we evolve how can we be better how can we do more how can we champion our talent more how can we create more opportunity how can we be better how can we do better how can we you know kind of lead by example in this industry and you know everybody who's a part of this also supports that same ideology and i i think that's what makes everybody so special every single model you know you you don't sign up to just model swimwear to be a part of this brand you know you you want to do more you want to you want to be in it you want to be a model obviously you want to be a photographer but you also see that this is an opportunity to take this you know exposure this platform and do more with it and be additional you know and there's nothing wrong with that in fact that's what i want for everybody in my life like i always say this i always point to it but if every single person not just models but hair makeup photographer editors stylists you know trainers everybody anybody who touches this could could end up with opportunity like the universe that like a kathy ireland has created for mm. herself or a tyra banks has created for herself that's what I want. You know, we are defined by the, the, the people that come out of this. And so, you know, I, I just want to be a vehicle for that. I want to help these wonderful women and men and, you know, everybody who touches this brand to optimize themselves and their goals. So I think we're in a unique position that we can do that because we are such a legacy brand and we are so well known throughout the country and the world. So it's just, it's, it's a really amazing position to be in. And it's like, you know, use your power for good. Mm. We're still I, making I, beautiful pictures. We're still creating that. incredible content, but we're also elevating and lifting people up and inspiring women around the world and changing the way people think. And, you know, the way you think about yourself, Futsai, like, I mean, obviously, like, I know your history. I know you've been like, You've had 9,000 different iterations of yourself and you're one of the most amazing, like, you know, MacGyver men I've ever <laughs> met in my life. But, you know, a lot of people think that they can't do something because of whatever path they've chosen before. Mm. And uh, I don't know, I think it's just a, it's a great place to kind of be like, hey, you know, it's okay, guys. Like, you can do all of this. You can be sexy and smart and, you know, study and be a mom and, you know, host a show and be a photographer and have a clothing line and 
cook and learn to code. I don't care. Like you can do a lot of these things, you know? And these are the things, I, I think you're right. Cause I, I think sports, for me, Sports Illustrated Swimsuit, when I used to pick it up when I was younger, I, I would think there's a place of escapism, right? You open this, you, you escape, you go to the fantasy world with these beautiful ladies. Everybody has a different reason to open these magazines. But for me, I, I, I love the fact that it's all around the world. You never know where you guys are gonna go to and do, do what was it like to be able to be there? And all those were the fantasy stuff that comes in and be able to live with that for the last 10 years now has been an incredible blessing. But what most importantly that what you said just now that that really matters to me is how these women have become incredible brands because of Sports Illustrated that it gave them a power to be a brand. And back then there was no Instagram, there was no website and they have to build from ground up and look at the career of this wonderful, gorgeous, I'm gonna get in trouble for this picture probably. But I know, probably. <laughs> I'll take it off now. The fishnet bikini bathing suit. We'll put a bar Cheryl. on that. But, yeah. but Chrissy Brinkley, she's still on QVC twice yesterday. I watched her, you know, and and it's, it's so amazing to see these women back before all these platform were available were able to achieve what they achieved today and now with accessibility to all these available platforms that each one of these girls have to take them on and be more responsible i think that is so so important right and i i think that's sort of the tradition of the brand right like we we've always we collective we sports illustrated has been always given so much credit for empowering models even from the earliest days because um they were they were given their names were listed on the page oh. so like typically in a fashion magazine you would see a picture of a model in a beautiful outfit but you would not know who she was you wouldn't know what her name was but si you know really diverged from everyone else and they put the name on there so you saw a picture of christy brinkley or cheryl t or kathy ireland and you then you saw her name kathy shot in blah 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 christy Tegan, Christy Brinkley, like whoever shot in this. So you automatically then knew who this woman was, which gave such an advantage to that, that person being, being exposed to so many Americans and, you know, people around the world because of the sheer volume of individuals that were looking at the, the brand. And so, you know, now in addition to giving the, the models and the makeup artists and the photographers, names associated with their likeness uh, this brand gives you all a voice right so we're gonna champion your other initiatives that you're making outside of like our brand and outside of our printed page and we're going to encourage and support that and and try and you know help in any way we can because again this brand is only as good as the people we associate with and and the the more successful you are, you'd say, the more successful Sports Illustrated Swimsuit is. And we want to be a part of that. We want to help it along in every way we can. And, and that goes, that speaks to everybody who is a part of it. And I think, I think that's what's really unique about us because it's, mm -hmm. it's so not one-sided. And, and that's why we attract the type of people we attract because you come to this brand to be a little bit more, right? Like you want to be, in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, but maybe you also want a clothing line. Maybe you also want a, your own talk show. Maybe you also, you know, want to have your own travel series somewhere. Like there's all of these potentials that you get to explore because of the sheer nature of what we do as a brand, but also because we get behind it. And I just believe in that. I just believe in like, why stop? Why stop here? Like be, be better, be more, keep improving, keep trying, keep failing, keep, did you know, you, just keep moving. Did you feel like it was a bit of a um, a learning curve, though, for the audience to know what this brand has evolved into? Because sure. I, because we, we definitely, as a photographer in the last 10 years, over the years, I had to learn the messaging, the images I capture, what does it really speak of? And ultimately, at the end of the day, we shoot a lot of film, and you as editor-in-chief really handpick imageries that meet the DNA of what the new brand represents. And I think that's, that for me was a really, really big lesson to learn to, this year when we went to um, Bali together this year. And I had to understand that among photographing these women, 
And by photographing them from the perspective of 10 years ago, she sigh, oh, do I learn from all the lessons and what the political climate is like right now? What is, what are the, each individual woman speaking about, right? What's their point of view and how do I capture their point of view and amplify them? I think that's what's most powerful about this brand now is that, like you said, you're giving me a platform here to sit here with you on SI Swim channel. I, I could never have imagined that 10 years ago. And well, 10 I mean, years ago, I mean, wasn't doing that, you know? Right. And I mean, you could speak to that as a photographer, I think, because, right, like, we've both been around a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I know just from when I started, it was always like, you know, oh, this is what the photographer wants. And if the mm. photographer wants this, if he wants you to cut your hair off or stand on one foot or bend over in a, you know, weird position, like, okay, that's what you have to do. But that's not. That's not what we embrace. That's not what we celebrate. Like we want everybody to be a part of the conversation. And that's changed, I think, dramatically from, you know, like the nineties when I was, you know, first starting out where it was very much just one specific person's call or maybe mm. two. And then or the brand, like it's like this is the way we do it, right? Like it this has to fit this is the lane. You're in this lane. You don't leave this lane because you just don't. And this is what's expected of you. But, but you that's know, not what what we encourage. And that's not what I encourage for my 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 teams, you know? Like I want to hear people's differing opinion. I want to I want so that. Unique. I'm not always right. But that's so unique in a position that you're in be able to express that because that's not so true in all different fashion of the business that I'm in, right? When I show off a Harper's Bazaar, there's an expectation, I shoot this way, I've been doing it for 15 years, this is what you deliver to Harper's, and when I shoot for Vogue, I have the, I literally have a cut sheet from Vogue, if you're shooting for a cover, it's literally, you gotta have blue, you have to have green, the model is this big in the middle, if it's a celebrity, it needs to be a certain age, it's backlight, there's a formula that actually falls into some of these editorial magazines, I'm giving secrets away right now, but <laughs> when SI, those rules are all broken because honestly, I don't know as a photographer if the shot I'm shooting is going to be used for a cover, table of contents, or even going to make it into the image. Therefore, every frame matters to me. And, and I know with our relationship, I always start my day of the shoot and say, how many outfit changes do you want? And you always go, I'm thinking six to eight. And I'm thinking in my head going eight to 10. <laughs> because they increase the percentage of the chances that I get more pictures in the magazine because that's right. what I'm proud of, right? I'm proud of my work. I'm proud of my contribution to be able to do that. And that's, that's, that's not just, just photographer, hair, makeup people. Even from the brands that you make noticeable in swimsuit, you have made swimsuit brand become everyday people, people understand and know because a lot of swimwear brands, you and I both know that they're small. They don't have advertising dollars. They don't get to buy ads everywhere. This was a place for them to have an opportunity to, to make their work shine. Right. I mean, I, I just think, like, I apply this to everything in my life. Like, nobody wants to eat vanilla cake every single day <laughs> of their life. Like, every single day, every single meal, you don't want to eat vanilla cake. Like, you want to try different things. You, maybe you won't like it. Maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe it's the wrong choice. But, like... You want to have those experiences, whether it's an aesthetic experience or whether it's a conversation, whether it's, you know, um, something exploratory. Like, I, I just am such a firm believer in, in, the, in success tied to the constant need to evolve mm. smartly, of course. Like, I don't feel like you need to push out of something that's working for you, but there's no reason why you can't do both, right? There's not, no reason why you can't continue to do what works, but also explore new uncharted territory. I think there's a lot of learnings that come in that from a business perspective, from a personal perspective, from, you know, the, the global conversation. I mean, we've seen that, right? Like we've been able to, I take such pride in, in, you know, being able to say like, we had Ashley Graham on the cover of this magazine when no one else had had, you know, a, a, a curvy woman on a cover, no major, fashion magazine had ever done that before. I take great pride in shooting Kate Upton in Antarctica. I take great pride in Tyra Banks and the historical, you know, like content that comes along with that. You know, she was our, 
cover last year, but she was also, you know, one of the first like women of color on a major fashion cover of major fashion magazine, certainly of Sports Illustrated, you know, t too late in the game, I, I will say, but but also to that point, you know, like there's there's something very rewarding and, and in the historical fabric of this brand where, you know, we like to be bold. Like it's not even about doing things first. It's about doing things right and, mm -hmm. and, and, and making an impact with, with these types of decisions and basically being empowered. And I can speak for myself, like being empowered to make those decisions and, and, you know, to say, you know what, I, I want Ashley Graham on the cover and people were like, okay, cool, let's do it. You know what I mean? And, and like those types of, of, of moves and decisions that we've been able to make have changed the course of history and have changed the course of conversation and how women and men feel about themselves and, and the way the, the media landscapes looks today. And I'm really, really proud of that. And, you know, I, I want to continue to do that. We have a long way to go, right? Like we have a long way to go where there's appropriate, you know, diversity in, in media, where the landscape is re representative of what it should be, where we are able to shatter all these perceptions, whether it's like what you think you can do, Yutsai, or what, you know, a rookie model coming up or a model search model thinks she can do. And, you know, as we do more of these things and have like more of these model searches, we learn that gradually we are making a huge impact, you know, in the way that people, you know, talk about themselves and think about themselves and find themselves capable like you're part of model search you know every year you you know you join i have a one and... you guys i go to model search every year i have not made top 16 yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm always 17 i'm always at the cutoff but i, I love what you just said you'll it's get there about... don't worry <laughs> <laughs> well i love what you just said that it's not always about being the first but about doing it right and over the years i have seen a lot of the first and i do think they make an impact for me as a photographer from a consumer standpoint, knowing that Tyra Banks was the first color model on the cover, single on SI, and having to work for her on American Next Top Model, and then seeing her once again come back in, 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 in a full circle and, and grace the cover now, it's that, that gives me so much hope what it means to do things right. You know, because in, in right. fashion, we all, we constantly make mistakes, right? And it's easy to let every season, every season goes away. It goes, oh, this collection was bad. We can do a new collection. This collection was bad. But however, because we are in this world now that everything lives forever. You know, every image we create does live forever. And it becomes a brand messaging. I feel like since, since the last 10 years, the biggest change for me was when I saw this cover changed over the years to becoming a cover that I got to do with you uh, a couple years later, I want to pull that cover up to yeah. this cover. And that's the same model, you know, but the messaging completely evolved and changed. Yes. This is doing oh a time God. in 20... Can we talk about that? Yes, Can let's do that. talk about so that? Because... I'm going to oh, flash back my... over to this cover and what that cover meant. The audience obviously meant. Well, I mean, th yeah, so for that, that th this, is the, this is like one of my biggest like one of the things i'm most proud of one of my biggest frustration points is that when that cover was launched everybody was like oh my god sports illustrated put a plus size model on the cover look at how big she is she's on the cover like and i was like what like what are you what are you she's perfect like she is so gorgeous and it, it, it registered for me all of a sudden, like, wow, like we think differently right now, mm -hmm. right? Like Sports mm -hmm. Illustrated really thinks, we were so shocked by the blowback that that cover received about her size. As I think a lot of people were once it started gaining speed, but you know, it made me realize something like, wow, like people are twisted. Like people are really like, like we gotta, we gotta fix this, you know, like, First of all, this is a, a, a young, like beautiful, healthy, like like bombshell woman, as is Tyra Banks, as is Ashley Graham, as is every every woman that we feature in this magazine. But like it 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 drove me to go to the next step because I was like, wow, she is this girl is getting so much heat for looking the way she does and being on the cover of our magazine. 
there's something so messed up with that, you know, and, and, and how upsetting that was as a, as a female and for her as a friend to her and, you know, just to, the bigger realization was that a lot of people in the world thought that way, thought that way. And that's just and, and so You and I know her so well. We, we, we kind of grew up with her. I grew up with her in this industry. I met her when she was really young as well. And, and I remember during that time, one part of me was so excited for her to land this cover. We were all celebrating that, that she has this cover. But on the flip side of it, and, and I've invited her to come on the show as well to talk about that, it was the blowback of the judgment, so the, the hurt, the pain, that, that, the shade, the things that everybody threw at her. And she was only at the time, I believe, 18 years old. Yeah, she was a young girl. And, and a young girl who who everyone had, you know, like, there's no place for judgment. Th I guess that's what I took away from that. I was like, wow, like, there, that needs to change. That needs to change. Yeah. So fast forward, many, a few covers in between that cover and your cover with her. When she did end up on the cover that year, her photos were so great that you took, you had three covers of her. Um, <laughs> and I, I remember I did an interview with someone that said, you know, oh, you're all about a diversity. You're all about, you know, size, body inclusivity and size acceptance and loving yourself. But here you go and you put a, a, blonde, a skinny blonde woman on not one, but three covers. And I laughed and I was like, thank you. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Thank you for saying that because five short years ago, the entire universe came for Kate, came for SI, came for all yes. of us because I put a fat girl on the cover and in five short years public perception has changed so much so much that that people came for me for putting Kate Upton on the cover because she was a skinny blonde woman and that was one of the most beautiful moments of my life because I was like wow well look look what we did the first time she was on the cover there was so much hate directed at us because of her size which was not a standard straight size, which by the way, I think she even was, her proportions are just different. And anyway, like she just looked different. Oh my God. Oh my God. She looked different. And, um, to a few years later where she was on the cover again and she wasn't different enough. And I'm like, that is a great sign that mm -hmm. come for us then. Like if, if we, if we have, we're getting that far where that is now accepted and not, <laughs> not inclusive enough. I'm, I'm so happy and we will continue to, you know, have that conversation. So it was like a really like Kate's, Kate's trajectory, Kate's growth, like her, her growth, the, the industry's growth, the public's growth was so extraordinary measured in Kate Upton bookends. <laughs> yes. It was, it's fascinating and it's so fulfilling and I, I couldn't be happier, you know, like I could not be happier. And listen, you're never going to make everybody happy. You're never going to make, you have 24 girls, 34 girls in an issue. And, you know, you can try and be as diversified and as representative as, as humanly possible. But the beauty of this world is that there's so much uniqueness and individuality. You're never going to be able to do that. So it's okay. We're going to always piss some people off and that's fine. And you're not going to see everyone represented but we're gonna try our best and to continue that conversation anyway. well i love the representation in this cover there's an asian girl <laughs> on the cover there's a dark hair <laughs> girl on the cover and there's like you know adele with lily aldrich and chrissy Teigen. and what i love about this cover is that each one of these women are so powerful now in their own right the health advocate a, a, a cook and a judge and on TV now, Chrissy Teigen and supermodel. I don't even know what title you give to her. She's just a mogul now, you know? And, and Lily Aldridge representing everything I think a woman represents, a mom and, and hardest working model and mom that I know and the kindest human being kindest. I know. Oh, the yeah. kindest. And, and that sits a long, 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 long respect for me. It's a huge respect and long respect for me because in this industry, I worked in so many different magazines and being kind was not always a popular thing to have. And I will have to say through SI, through shooting on SI, I definitely have learned adjustments. And those of you guys, I see some of the, the text questions below, like you have changed so much from top model. Well, yes, we all have. 
we all adjust to what the climate requires. I was a Simon Cowell of the days of top model under the entire Banks franchise. And, and now I'm you side photographer was, was illustrated. And we, we do have to evolve. And, and one of the biggest evolution that happened for SI is model search. This started a spark of a new conversation that happened. And we see the, the, the popularity of the brand now is in, embracing by women and for all ages. And I want you to talk about that. Yeah, model search is like one of my favorite things that we do. I mean, there's so many good things about this brand, but model search is really personally gratifying. Um, I mean, we it was born out of, you know, frustration. Mm. You know, I can remember we were standing around in our office and it was, you know, we were getting ready to start casting for the upcoming issue. And I just kept seeing the same cards of the same yeah. women that absolutely you know, perfectly lovely, beautiful women, but, you know, for one reason or another, you know, they, they all just sort of felt the same. And what this brand is, 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 is hand selected people that all that represent very different things, either subtle or dramatically different. And, um, you know, we take great pride and pains to find the right fit for this brand. So you're not seeing, you know, 34 women that are all identical to one another, all speak to the same cause or all want the same things. You know, everyone is very unique and special. And um, Alyssa Conroy, one of my colleagues, she was like, we should just have our own model search. And I was like, <laughs> a brilliant idea, a brilliant idea. But like, what do we do? How do we do it? And thank God Instagram existed because we said, oh, we'll, we'll just ask for submissions. Well, if people make videos and you know, they'll, they'll send them in and we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, probably a couple of people will send them in. We'll see what happens. Oh my you know, God. Fast forward thousands and tens and hundreds of thousands, thousands of submissions um, later, you know, we've met some really incredible people and continue to meet some really incredible people, but we've also created this incredible community of yes. women that support one another, that champion each other, that, you know, identify with what this brand stands for and wants want to be that like whether or not they're part of sports illustrated they continue to pursue that for themselves there's so many people that i see you know that come back on a regular basis to that either submit or to our open casting calls or you know reach out you know through different social media you know out outlets to say, you know, hey, like, I, I know this is my third time, or I know this is my fourth time, but I really want to keep trying for that. And to those people, I say, yes, keep trying for that. You know, there's, you evolve, right? Like, just because you come to one casting and you don't make it, it doesn't mean it's over for you. Like, what- And it's one of the we, hardest decision I think you as editor have to make. I know I'm in a room watching you do the final 64 to 16 and to six and the, guys out there, ladies out there, just so you know, it's not an easy task. It is not like Tinder, you swipe left and swipe, swipe right. It's not anything mm -hmm. like that. It is, it, it brings so much tears to your heart because you really truly love these ladies. And I mean, listen, I know Kathy Ages Beauty, you guys follow her. She auditioned, I think twice or three times. And, and but somehow I didn't remember her the first time. Somehow right. I didn't remember her the second time. But the Happens last all year- the time. We, Happens when with she regular model casting. Like, yes. it, just, it just, what you need one year or what you're looking for one year is different. It's a puzzle. It's a giant yes. moving, living, breathing puzzle. And every year it changes. Every, every minute it changes. You know, it, it's like, what is the cultural conversation? Yes. What is the relevant talking point? What do you want to do as a person? Like as a person in charge of the brand, what do you want to do as a brand how, what are you missing? What, what are you just now seeing for the first time? Who's so spectacular and blows your mind? It doesn't matter what, you know, bucket you fit into. Like who has short, short term goals that can be realized now that you can help and, and relate to the brand? Who has long term goals that, that can, you can help cultivate and grow and relate to the brand? Like, I wish it was simple as like this bombshell walks in and I'm like, done, you know, it's not, it's not, it is, it is such a strategic and careful and, and personal and emotional. There's connectivity. There's, there's so many things like you could have 
5 million followers on social. Everyone's like, oh, you need a big social media following. No, you don't. For, for some, in some cases, yeah, it helps. In others, I don't care. Like, it just, it doesn't matter. And it's all, it's all very fluid. You know, so, so it's, it's just really interesting. And, and it really compounds, like people say, don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on it. Like keep, keep trying, keep reinventing yourself, keep evolving yourself, keep growing yourself. Like it's not that you have to change from one year to another, but like you may have realized something about yourself from January of 2019 to January yeah. of 2020. And you're going to talk about it for the first time, or you're going to show it, or you're going to act on it. And that's going to be the thing that makes a difference that then like really pushes yourself, you know, to the forefront of consideration for things. And so I don't know, it, 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 it there's so many moving parts to it. And I, I, and everybody's always like, how, how, you know, I want to be in the magazine. What do I have to do? You, you just that have was, to do that's you. Always number one question, right? I have you all you just have to do you. Me. You just have to do you. That's all you have to do is do you and be the best version of yourself and have that drive and through. have that drive. You know what I mean? It's it's really, it's a special, it's a really special part of this brand, unique to us, I believe, because what we stand for and the type of people that we work with, all you guys, Yutsai, all these awesome followers, but like, you know, it's just, you guys need to remember that. It's, it's not, there isn't a, a checklist of things you have to do. Everybody's their own special sauce. And there's not just one sauce that tastes good, right? Like, it's just, you, you really have to own that and, and be confident in that. Don't make yourself and, into somebody else. And I also think it's important for you guys to know that this, this part of the franchise with Sports Illustrated Swimsuit is run by women. Powerful women with strong mind and really has a point of view. And they're there to really help you bring out your point of view. I think that's one thing that I got to see the last couple of years, Serge, from beginning to end is that, People who come in with most authenticity and who doesn't, you know, exploit their own stories, but just simply sharing with truth, it really does come through. And I know some people wait in line for two days to get to see you and some people um, waiting in the rain, I remember, and I was waiting in the sun, people were getting sunstroke. It's, it was mind boggling to me. I was like, this is insanity. And I, and, and I, I remember saying to you, do you realize what you have done. Do you realize that you are now the dream maker for so many of these girls? And you would get mad at me. No, don't tell me that. <laughs> you would like this, it, but because I'm not, so I'm not. They're their own dream makers. They are their own dream makers. I am just a facilitator. <laughs> well, amazing at it. Without you, that a lot of these dreams couldn't come true. But the thing is, ladies, I think you do need to know that you have to keep on asking for it you have to keep on putting yourself out there for it and and people ask me this all the time i get dms what do i need to do can i be this tall this short can i yes you can be all the things that you're describing and the fact that mere fact that you have to ask that you're not having the confidence that you need does that make sense like what? just don't you think though i feel like that it's most people men and women have just grown up with the misconception, but like rightfully so, that you have to be a certain way to be a certain thing. And that's where we're saying you don't. You don't. You're worthy. And it's and it's 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 this is a this is a common conversation now that lots of different brands are having and lots of different people are having. And yay, I am like so thrilled about that. But it's it's gonna take some time to to soak in to folks that you know, you, you just, you, you just have never really, this is new. This is a new conversation to be having like this, this like message of empowerment that you're hearing from everywhere. It's one thing when there's like one or two brands saying that, you know, like Dove and Sports Illustrated and, you know, Aerie and, and, and brands like that. But, you know, now it's a chorus, like now it's the trendy thing to do, which i I'm thrilled about like let it be forever trendy you know but now it's a chorus and now it just doesn't seem so unique that we're hearing that but you're dealing with like years and years and decades and decades of like oppression you know of of that people and 
things and brands have been telling you you're not good enough, whether it's like audibly or subliminally. Right. And it's going to take some time to get out of that, I think, for people. But it, it just push yourself, you know, just push yourself to 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 get out of that comfort you know zone and you know so what you're short so what you're size 18 so what you're 62 so what you're bald so what you so what so what like beauty is everywhere inside outside you know and right now we're seeing a really really important special moment in time mm -hmm. and i just hope it never goes away where people have really rallied behind that and they want to focus on that they want to focus in the individuality and they want to focus on the uniqueness that we all possess as humans, because it's like, it's like, you know, you've traveled around the world. Like what, what one culture thinks is beautiful. Another could care less about, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so fascinating. Like what we've done to ourselves as, as like, like humans, you know, where we're not considered worthy or valuable unless there's, you know, we look, we have this one thing about us. I mean, cool. It's cool to like, want to follow the trends. Like, yeah, I dye my hair blonde. Like I wear a mascara. Like I, that's me. Like that's what I like. And you know what? It's right. okay to be that way. But like, that's, that's that we got to keep, we got to keep going with that, you know, where it's like, don't try and, and fit into and, a box. And it's not a trend. As I never did this because of trend. And I can attest to that. This was a messaging that, that came out of necessity so people can hear your vision. And because well, right. that isn't, did evolve and did change and, and no longer just one publication. It lives all year round. The interviews with the models are so ever important. How they are outside of being a model is so important. And yes. that's what I think so that this messaging is about. That right. you have to own your the, own brand. Right, because that's the other thing too. It's like, oh, what? how hard could her life be? Look at, look at her. Can right. I tell you, the beautiful people, <laughs> The, the beautiful people that like the universe that, that society tells you are the beautiful people, they have some of the, the, the biggest struggles, you know, because that's all they're judged for. No one wants to hear what's in here. No one wants to take anything that comes out of their mouths seriously. No one thinks that they're capable of doing anything else but looking beautiful. And that's the farthest from the truth, you know? Right. And, it, you know, actresses and, and actors, like, they get to speak for a living and if their, their, their beauty accompanies that, but you know, for, for models, like it's, it's been a, it's been a frustrating point to like have people like dismiss someone because of the way they look, whether it's their, their overwhelming beauty or their size or their age. Or their or, culture. You, know, you put your culture, culture, you put Muslim on the, in a magazine where everybody was shocked. She's me in burkini, right? This is, but, this is what I love and about this franchise and the celebration of diversity, culturally, age, and sizes is that I'm obviously not a white guy who grew up in America and, and got this position because I'm a white guy, right? Even being in this magazine, I remember looking open magazine back in the day, see Walter Chin's name. I go, oh my gosh, this magazine hires Asian photographer. I have hope. And God knows, I have my agents calling and say, I want to work with this magazine. And he's like, you just started shooting last year. I don't care. And by the way, you guys, I started shooting for SI on my third year as a photographer. That was crazy. When you called, I thought it was, it was a joke. I was like, no, come on. This is not possible. This, this is like bucket list. It's not supposed to happen in 10 years. But you keep asking. You've got to do what you do that you know is right. And because at the time, I was shooting something that, like what SI was doing, people were not loving. They're like, he shoots fat girls. I mean, I literally can tell you how many text messages or, uh, from agents who would not give me models to shoot because they said, you shoot fat girls. You don't really, you're not a real photographer because you don't shoot skinny girls. You don't shoot fashion. You only know to shoot curvy girls. That's not fashion. Or you shoot celebrities. You're not a real photographer. But guess what, guys? All that stuff is shattered. You are your own brand. And I can be an example of that. I stuck with it. I stuck with it with beauty like Ashley Graham, that's the her beauty like, like Chrissy Teigen that I can relate to because she dark like me. And those things do matter. So when you open the magazine now, I hope you can see a different perspective that it is a reflection of what we hold to bring from everyone, from a photographer standpoint, from hair and makeup crew, the entire franchise. It's about you, right? Isn't that what we're doing? It's about empowering them to own their brand 
and and love each other and be kind to each other and like how the fashion world can sometimes be. <laughs> not here though. We're not here not, for that. <laughs> not here for that. It's truly, but also we're just here to create and we're to we're here yes. to like how wonderful is it, Isai, as a photographer to be able to explore beauty in such a different capacity. You know what oh. I mean? It's it, uh, Yes, and I have a few questions that people keep asking, and I want to ask for them, and that is, you are so inspirational. The talk of the, the model search is, is so important to them. They want to know, is it happening again, and when yes. do you think it will happen? Guys, it's happening. It's happening. Okay, I don't know how much time we have. Probably not that much, but um, it is happening. Obviously, there's a global pandemic going on right now that will impact how we execute it. However, mm -hmm. I promise, we will have an announcement very soon about how we will proceed with model search um, for 2021 for starting in 2020. So never fear, get ready. It's coming. And I promise it is coming in a great way and in a really effective way. And um, I'm really excited for this. It's going to allow us to get to know you better um, and to participate with you more. And it, it, Nothing about this pandemic is good, but the way it has encouraged us to think about doing things is really exciting. So mm. stay tuned. Yeah, I think it, it will. It's going to change the perspective of next year for sure. Even from a photographer's standpoint, what is the listen? I love this Instagram tag that's out there right now. Normal did not work, so let's not go back to normal. Let's keep challenge and let's keep on keep on pushing. And 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 everybody is still asking. It's the next issue coming out soon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we've had to make some adjustments, and I hope everyone is is understanding of that. But it's all for the good of the cause. And yes, the issue is coming out. Not to worry. There, there. We will have um, we will have announcements very soon. But we have had to move. We have had to move the launch of 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 the the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Um, but it's coming. Not to worry. We want to focus on the important things right now, and that's making sure everyone is healthy okay. and safe. And um, we, we we want focus to be there, and and we will the issue will come out. Promise. Well, <laughs> it's guys, too good I, not to. It's, that was all day. Everything we talked about in the last hour. That's the two things that everybody keep repeating to ask. That's the only thing they want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody asked for my worry. skin routine today. Yes. You know, yes. usually you get what's your favorite product? What's your favorite hair? <laughs> no. They just want to know when the model source is going to be. And guys, do follow my Instagram and do follow MJ's Instagram and at SI underscore swim. SI <laughs> uh, swim underscore suit. swimsuit. That you will be able to to get the updates. And MJ, thank you so much for making the time with me today. And I just want to say that I am so proud of all the ladies I got to photograph and, and see their blossom. Camille, thank you for inspiring me again and again to keep doing good for this this um in, this at this time and and raising money for for the first responder yeah. so Camille, Camille Kostick and Rob Gronkowski kicked Thank all of this so off much. with a donation of ten thousand masks to my husband's hospital St. Joseph's in Patterson and we've created a competitive <laughs> caring network where that's what <sighs> we want just, just that's what do we want. good for each other pay it forward look into your own communities see where the need is. And check out Youth Size um, site because you can also make a donation there. And we're distributing very, very, very actively to um, institutions that are in most critical need here on the East Coast. So, um, and around the country as, as donations grow and, and assets come in. So this is not going away anytime soon, guys. <laughs> but I want to really give a big giant shout out to our angel donor, Amila Jolovich, who donated 30,000 masks. I know, Mila. I can't, I can't <laughs> thank you, Mila. I can't even tell you, they're going straight to New York City and um, they're gonna help a lot of people. With every mask you donate, you save more than one life. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you, this is an incredible gesture on your part. And I, I hope that that kind of donation inspires a lot more because it's not just masks, you know? We need face masks, we need yes. gowns, we need booties, we need gloves, like these- And they go into nursing homes too. They go into where the responders need it. And First responders, one more, what, yeah. And we're going to get cut off soon, but I just want to remind everyone, the conversation for sports, for SI Swimsuit does not end today. We'll continue with conversation with 
six more guests that are all models representing the brand and also representing their own brand. I can't wait to share those talks with you guys. So make sure you come back and tune in with me on weekdays every day at 2 p.m. Pacific time and 5 p.m. Eastern time. And I'll be posting them so you can figure out what we're going to follow. Because I'm not sure the girls are going to go on SIs um, or they're going to go on their own. We'll announce that as each day comes. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just working through this. But thank you so much again. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.